In a previous video where I talked about visualization, I recommended posing this question as a first step. Is there a bigger, simpler solid from which we can cut down to create a final shape? This can be a useful opening step when it comes to reverse engineering an object. As we look at more complex models, invariably, that strategy fails. When that happens, what is the next step? What is the next question that we can ask? Let's discuss that using this example. This will be a purely discussion type video to talk about a visualization strategy. I will not be doing any actual modeling here. However, I do plan to follow up on this with a video on a later date to demonstrate the actual modeling steps. Here's a picture of the model from the right plane. On first glance, it does seem like we are able to achieve the general shape by sketching the outline and extruding. The next step will be to think about how to achieve these faces. It becomes apparent that there is no easy way to trim this starting block to achieve the final shape. When we started an extrude based on the outline of the entire model, we were biting on more than we could chew. We need to be more flexible in our thinking here. Let's split this model into two sections. You can still tackle this section with a simple extrude. Let's analyze a more problematic section. When you realize that you cannot use a simple extrude, we can start thinking about the possibility of building a patchwork of faces. The first step is to identify the major faces. There are a lot of distracting elements here, but once you strip them away, you can start to identify two major faces. Let's first take a look at this face. It would be unrealistic to expect to be able to create this surface in one single stroke. We need to simplify this further. This is where you can ask yourself a variation of the first question. Is there a bigger patch of surface from which I can cut down to this final surface? On this surface body, there are three adjacent planar faces. We can easily imagine this to be part of a larger, simpler surface body. We can perform sketches and split this general surface into the shape that we need. The next major face is this transition face. This kind of resembles a chamfer with a varying cross section. This is a very good candidate for using the loft command. Trying to loft the surface from this end to the other end might create a lot of problems when it comes to profile or rail selection. Also, the variation in the cross-section is huge, especially in this region. Wherever possible, break this down into more manageable chunks, so that the lofts are easier to handle. In this case, there is a plane of symmetry in this model. We can perform the loft on one side and mirror it. This further simplifies the loft. With careful planning, we have managed to break this model down into a patchwork of surfaces, which can then be stitched together into a solid. So have fun experimenting with this strategy, and keep a lookout for the upcoming video where I will be demonstrating the actual modeling steps.